Hello and welcome to Dialogue. I'm Yang Rei. Myanmar's new president, Hitin Kiel, has been sworn in after the National League for Democracy won about 80% of the votes in Myanmar's general election more than four months ago, when the NLD, led by Aung San Suu Kyi, won 80% of the contested seats. Aung San Suu Kyi herself will be foreign minister. So what can we expect to see from the new democratically elected government and how fast can things actually change in a country that has been dominated so long by the military? And how will bilateral relations with China pan out, not to mention other neighbors such as India and Bangladesh? To discuss these and other questions, I'm very happy to be joined here in the Beijing studio by Mr. Victor Gaojikai, director of the China Myanmar Friendship Association, and Professor M. D. Nalapal from Manipur University. But let's begin by looking at this. Transition for Myanmar. Standing in the middle and in front of a joint session of parliament and diplomats from around the world, Tin Chau was sworn in and became Myanmar's first truly civilian president in more than 50 years. We were happy when we won the election. We were also happy when we nominated the president. But today we confirmed the president and also the ministers, so it is time to feel the real happiness. The historic day comes after Tin Cha's National League for Democracy won by a landslide in the November elections and took the majority of parliament seats. The country's democracy icon, Aung San Suu Kyi, was also sworn in and is in charge of four ministries. She chose her trusted friend and aide, Tin Cha, as her proxy because the constitution bars her from the presidency because her children are foreign citizens. Dun. People voted for her because they support her. Now the one they support will take a position in the government. Our people will like that. I think Aung San Suu Kyi taking a position in the government means that the government can do much better to develop our country. But the day's transition is only a start. The military-drafted constitution gives the army control of three ministries, plus 25 percent of the seats in parliament, enough to block any changes. In his short speech to Parliament, Tin Cha spoke of working towards constitutional reform. He said he will form a constitution which is suitable to the country and the citizens. At a certain stage, Myanmar will have to decide about uh, the changes of the constitution to, to accompany the evolution of society and to reflect the aspiration of the people. Now, how it should be done, when it should be done, that's for the Myanmar people to decide. Myanmar has been ruled by the military for more than 50 years. The existing national civil servant system took shape under military rule, and reforming the institution will not be as simple as removing its staff. Welcome to Dialogue, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, uh, despite the overwhelming landslide victory in the general elections, NLD will have to face the future with an unexpected, I mean inexperienced government. Um, she is 70 years old and she will perform four duties, uh, the chief of the uh, presidential office, uh, foreign minister, minister of education and energy. Now how could you expect uh, her to perform so much duty uh, uh, given the inexperience? Well, uh, I think, you know, as a leader, she will have the support of officials. She'll have the support of party members. So I don't think that her age by itself would be such as to disqualify her from paying a lot of attention to all these issues. The fact is that the policy followed by the previous military government of Myanmar has been a failure. Myanmar is in very, very bad shape, despite the fact that it has very rich natural resources and it has immense potential. So I think it is good that a clean break is being made from the past and a set of new policies are being implemented. So I'm quite confident that, that uh, Dao Aung San Suu Kyi is likely to do a very good job of ensuring that she is in de facto control of the government of Myanmar. Victor, do you think democracy will necessarily lead to very good governance of the country and the economy? Well, first of all, let's uh, congratulate Myanmar on having a very successful democratic election and the uh, transition to a democratically elected and appointed government. And uh, we also wish uh, Aung San Suu Kyi all the best wishes in her important duties. A democracy is important for a country like Myanmar, and uh, they have embarked upon a reform for greater democracy. And let's hope uh, all the people in Myanmar great success. 
uh, having said that, you know, sometimes uh, there are countries which are actually burdened down by what they believe as democracy, and there is a conflict between democracy and efficiency. So I think for Myanmar, which has so many things to do, and they need to do so many things so urgently, I hope they will be able to achieve equilibrium between whatever democratic aspirations the people in Myanmar may have, as well as a level of pragmatism and realism, which will steer the way towards greater economic success. We know there are big differences between South Africa and Myanmar. Uh, we know what happened in South Africa in the early 1990s, following the end of the apartheid. But do you think the uh, huge uh, um, popular charisma and leadership and strong leadership of uh, Nelson Mandela as well as Aung San Suu Kyi, both are hailed as heroes for democracy one way or another, could help uh, the economy transition smoothly and could their tremendous popularity help elevate the country out of, in the case of South Africa, the mire of uh, apartheid and the racial things and in the case of Myanmar, uh, it could become a um, a good economy, so to speak. Well, the fact is that in the case of Nelson Mandela, he had no choice. He had to remain in prison. And they threw him in prison and they threw the key away for decades. In the case of Aung San Suu Kyi, she always had the choice of walking out of her house prison and going to Europe. And even when her beloved husband was, was dying of cancer, she chose to remain with her people and with her country and not go uh, and to be with her husband. So she has shown extraordinary devotion to the people of Myanmar. And I'd also like to again say that Myanmar is a country of immense potential. It has huge natural resources. It's a very talented uh, people. It is very strategically located near China, India, ASEAN. So from all these points of view, I think the job confronting Ms. Suu Kyi is a lot easier than the job that confronted Mr. Nelson Mandela. Well, the constitution in Myanmar bars Madam Aung San Suu Kyi from assuming presidency, and therefore uh, her very close friend and the confidant, uh, uh, Kassin, uh, uh, Kassin Keo, um, became the president. So could we draw a parallel between the alleged double-head eagle in Russia, between uh, Medvedev and Putin, with the uh, coalition between Suu Kyi and He Ting Chiao. Uh, Victor. Well, actually, the situation in Myanmar reminds me of uh, Deng Xiaoping when he rose to uh, power in the 1970s. Deng Xiaoping actually did not carry any uh, meaningful title at all, except the chairman of the military commission, of course. He was not the president of the People's Republic of China. He was not the chairman or the secretary general of the Communist Party of China. He was not the prime minister, for example. But he managed to do all the great things for China without a very, very substantive party or government title. And I think in Myanmar, while Aung San Suu Kyi apparently is the paramount leader, uh, there is no question about that. You know, she is now uh, holding four positions in the cabinet, as well as her party positions. I hope, you know, at a certain level, you know, either you manage to amend the constitution and become the president, or you become someone like Deng Xiaoping as the paramount leader of Myanmar. The key is not what title that you carry. The key is whether you can really deliver the economic miracles which will be the benefits to the people in Myanmar. And Myanmar cannot wait. I think uh, the honeymoon uh, will be very short for the NLD and Aung San Suu Kyi. People's uh, uh, patience will be very much limited. They need to move very quickly and deliver goods very quickly. Let's look at yet another embarrassing factor that may step in the way for good governors. With so much power still in the hands of the military, how effective can the new government be in real decision making? Well, I'd like to point out that China did a very important reform of the military during the time, it began during the time of President Jiang Zemin, and it has been certainly taken to a very excellent level under President Xi Jinping. And this is 
to ensure that the Chinese military is a completely professional military. It's not a business-oriented military. It's not at all, of course, in this, un unlike certain other militaries, it's not a military involved in governance issues such as Myanmar or some other countries. So from that point of view, I think there is going to be pressure on the military for a simple reason that if the military, through its control over certain important ministries, tries to put a break on the reform measures of Aung San Suu Kyi, I think the public mood is going to turn very negative to the military. And I think there is going to be a lot of public tension and a lot of public disquiet against the Myanmar military. So I do believe that the long-term future of the Myanmar ministry, military is to follow the example of India, follow the example of China, and be a completely professional military which has no role in the normal government uh, of the country. I mean, the government should control the military. The military should not have any kind of control over the government. Well, there's no doubt that Myanmar has embarked on a new journey a journey of discovery and rediscovery and uh, look at the new phase of the NLD and, mm -hmm. the, uh, and the secondary role the military might play. However, we won't forget what happened in the year 1990 when NLD first won the election but it was reversed and Chinese ambassador to Yang Guang was among the first to send a letter of congratulations to uh, NLD and yet my question is, this time around, do you think uh, we have reached a point of no return? Is this an re irreversible process for democratization in this uh, 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 poor country, among all others, in Southeast uh, Asian Nation Association? Uh, well, ASEAN? first of all, time has changed uh, significantly in this part of the world. Uh, and uh, I hope the military in Myanmar will recognize that they need to change, too, uh, with the changing tide. That's one point. On the other hand, if you look around in uh, many ASEAN countries, including, for example, the Kingdom of Thailand, uh, Indonesia, for example, the military remain a very dominant force uh, after the democratic reforms. And in Thailand, for example, the military is always ready to step in uh, whenever democracy or parliamentary uh, democracy fails. And uh, I think uh, in Myanmar, this uh, may also Excuse me, are you saying that the army would tend to play a pivotal role in maintaining political order in a changing society to maintain social and political stability and guarantee the economic transition? I think uh, the Myanmar's uh, military is taking a position that whenever democracy fails or the civilian government fails, they need to step in. Now, whether they will do that or not, that's another question. However, on the other hand, I think for Myanmar today to completely change the position of the military may be a very very daunting task and uh, I think uh, the new government in Myanmar uh, may need to spare no effort in building up the uh, economic development regardless of whatever the background for the military as well as their true uh, intention are and uh, in the medium and longer term of course Aung San Suu Kyi and her ruling party and the Myanmar's government may gradually adopt measures which will steal the Myanmar's military into a professional army. But that definitely will take time. I just hope, you know, order will not be lost and the euphoria will not be given away to disaster once there is a failure in one quarter or another which will probably entice the military in Myanmar to step in to the political side of the equation. You are watching Dialogue with the Professor Amdi Nalapat and Victor Gaudjakai. We are discussing the latest politics and the development of the situation there in Myanmar following the general election. We'll be back in a short while. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Victor, Thank you. what do you make of the uh, efforts, the huge efforts uh, that could be made by Suu Kyi and, his te and her team to level the playing field and to pave the way for advancing reform, which would be very difficult according to those who made predictions of different kinds. Definitely. I think uh, Aung San Suu Kyi's uh, main challenge is to, first of all, remain very calm, 
very uh, level-headed and also uh, look into the future and know which is the direction that she wants to bring Myanmar into in the coming few years or even a coming decade or so. Because without setting a target for the whole nation of Myanmar, uh, so many sectors, so many quarters and circles in Myanmar may eventually split off from each other and eventually get lost. So setting a vision for the whole nation is of absolute importance. And I think uh, improving efficiency in running the government, in delivering goods to the people, in improving the living standards of the people and mobilizing all the resources, not only in Myanmar but also throughout the international community so that people will commit to help Myanmar, to invest in Myanmar and to uh, roll out but infrastructure wonder, in Myanmar. This is I, important. I wonder if uh, the United States would agree to lift all the economic sanctions despite the tremendous and amazing uh, uh, changes in Myanmar. President Obama, of course, keeps a close eye on what's going on there. And don't forget, China remains Myanmar's largest tra trading partner uh, simply because of the largest factor in the trade that has been a 446% hike of Myanmar's exports to China due to a single project, the Sino-Myanmar gas pipeline. Now, having said this, do you think with the support of both China and the United States, the two biggest economies, Myanmar is likely to go ahead and uh, continue with its reform? Because uh, Suu Kyi was invited to visit China last year by President Xi Jinping, and that clearly indicated our backing for this uh, uh, newly elected leader. Of well, uh, China is one of the major sources globally of investable capital. China is also now one of the largest sources of technology. Uh, it's one of the largest sources of, for example, expertise in telecom, expertise in infrastructure, and expertise in several other fields. So it's only natural for Dao Aung San Suu Kyi to look to China for an important uh, role in the economic recovery of Myanmar. So far the US is concerned, it uses these high sounding phrases basically to cover up the fact that what it wants is a dominating position for American business. So unless Myanmar completely allows American business to have a dominant role in Myanmar, they are unlikely to lift all the sanctions. And if the Myanmar agrees to that, then the Myanmar economy is in more trouble than when there are sanctions on Myanmar. The multi-billion dollar Mitsung hydropower project in northern Kachin state came to a halt um, mm -hmm. after a 17-year-old ceasefire collapsed between the government and the ethnic rebel groups in northern uh, uh, Myanmar. It's also perhaps because of concerns uh, that, was, that were raised by a trained engineer uh, talking about the location of this uh, huge hydroelectric uh, project which is very close to a seismologically active mm -hmm. belt and therefore uh, there, there will be a lot of uncertainties concerning the uh, security. What do you think of uh, the political concerns as well as uh, uh, the alleged uh, uh, reason about the uh, earthquake fault line? Well, first of all, when you do any major infrastructure project, there are always many considerations, including uh, environmental consideration, geological consideration, uh, etc. And all these considerations need to be very well taken care of. But I don't think, you know, this uh, Misong hydropower project uh, has been uh, uh, started without paying due attention to all these considerations. On the other hand, Myanmar is in acute shortage of power, and I think uh, of top priority is to generate as much power as possible uh, in Myanmar or import power from the neighboring countries to enable the industrialization in Myanmar to take you know, off. President Tang San, the former president, ordered the halt of this project and there have been allegations that uh, relationship between China and Myanmar were very subtle uh, by the time this uh, project was brought to a halt. Uh, what do you think of uh, the uh, the impact of our bilateral relationship upon the uh, uh, grinding to halt of this uh, huge project uh, last year or y the year before last? You know, I come from India where we have a very pragmatic Prime Minister and this very pragmatic Prime Minister has ensured a warm welcome to Chinese investment, a warm welcome to Chinese visitors including tourists into India and who for decades have basically been almost blocked from coming to India, both investment as well as uh, Chinese visitors. So we have a very pragmatic Prime Minister who has taken pragmatic decisions. The reality of the situation is that whether it is China, whether it is India, whether it is the United States, all these are countries that Myanmar definitely needs for its economic development. Dao Aung San Suu Kyi 
has had many years to consider what are the best policies to follow to make Myanmar develop. Her people have been very close to the ground. They have understood the people's needs. So I think I'm very confident that they will take the correct decisions to ensure that the people of Myanmar benefit. And in that, I'm, I'm very certain that no country is going to be excluded. After all, the Chinese system is win-win. It's not zero-sum. There are some societies which say zero-sum. If you are not with us, you are against us. But the Chinese thing is, you can be with somebody else and you can also be with us. So I think that is a very healthy concept, which I do believe is likely to be followed by the new government. Given the history concerning the very complicated border area between Myanmar and China, um, I wonder if China, what kind of role China could play in bringing the two sides together uh, when the Myanmar government and those uh, uh, minority ethnic groups uh, were on loggerheads uh, and clashes, military clashes uh, occurred between the two sides. And China seemed to be caught in the crossfire. So what do you think of uh, what we can do to uh, ease the tensions in the uh, area which in areas uh, which were rich in resources and controlled by the minority groups and the militias. Well, I uh, read the speech by the newly elected uh, president of Myanmar very carefully, and the new president emphasized the national reconciliation mm -hmm. as one of the top three tasks that the new government need to do. Also, and I Suki really will lead the that. peace process uh, with her mm -hmm. very great strength as well as populism. In, in, indeed, and I think uh, given the uh, ethnic Popularity. background as the Myanmarese nation is composed of, you know, uh, taking care of the different aspirations and interests of the various ethnic groups in Myanmar is of uh, critical importance. And uh, to achieve national reconciliation through peaceful means is also very important. And I think China definitely can play a very useful role in urging peaceful reconciliation for the ethnic uh, problem in Myanmar, not only in the northern part which borders with China, but also with the uh, western part which uh, borders with, uh, with the Bangladesh. And I think eventually, you know, the different ethnic groups in Myanmar need to talk about the solutions by themselves. Outside forces should remain calm without, you know, interfering in their domestic affairs, but also need to urge for all parties to do the reconciliation in peaceful means. In the Western reports would say uh, China's past support of Myanmar's junta and other contentious projects presented it with a challenge in a country where many have accused China of being eager to plunder land, mineral and timber wealth at the expense of citizens. Does that accusation hold any water, Victor? Well, I don't think so. I don't think uh, these uh, biased uh, Western reports reflect the realities on the ground. For decades, China has dealt with Myanmar as an equal and has demonstrated all the goodwill and friendship towards uh, Myanmar. But at the same time, uh, uh, Professor Nalpa, do you think the new government in Myanmar will try very hard to keep a balance between the West and China, between Japan, India and China, in forging its new foreign policy and a new vision? I believe that uh, such a balance is exactly in line with the fundamental Chinese civilization and Chinese culture of harmony, which is also something which is emphasized by the leadership uh, in China. So I do believe that such a balance is important for Myanmar. And I certainly, as a friend of Myanmar, as someone who has admired Dao Aung San Suu Kyi, I certainly hope that there will be an effort at creating this kind of balance. And in fact, the fears have persisted, Victor, in some of the uh, uh, developing countries which used to rely too heavily on China's economic assistance and our investment. And they say they got, they got to diversify their stakes uh, instead of putting all the eggs in the same basket of China. What do you think of uh, the, the, such a popular concerns shared by our, uh, our friendly countries, uh, but, but they start to develop a balanced foreign yeah. policy. Well, so to if speak. I had a chance to advise Aung San Suu Kyi or the newly formed uh, Myanmar's government, I would advise them to treat all the countries, including India, China, Japan, the United States, all the EU members, all the neighboring countries, as equals, as friends, and deal with them on an equal basis and with goodwill and friendship. On the other hand, also emphasize that you need to you know, uh, assure your goodwill uh, by 
investing in Myanmar, by fully engaging with Myanmar on equal basis, on win-win solutions, mm. and urge all the countries to take part in the great excitement of the industrialization, modernization, and eventually also globalization of Myanmar. And I think all the countries, including our country, China, and probably your country, India, will have a fair chance to work together in many cases or sometimes to compete on uh, uh, honorable basis and eventually the winners will be the people in Myanmar. This should guide uh, the new government in Myanmar onto a steady road of modernization and industrialization by mobilizing all the resources from all corners of the world for the benefit of Myanmar. President Tan Sen, the former president of Myanmar, deserves credit for laying the groundwork for the democratic elections there and uh, at the same time he also controversially ordered the halt of uh, the uh, Misong uh, mm -hmm. uh, hydroelectric power project. What do you think of, uh, uh, what, what kind of a person will he go down history like? Well, I'd like to say that... Do you think he can be compared in a parallel comparison to F.W. de Klerk? who put an end to the apartheid by encouraging free elections. And he, as well as Nelson Mandela, won the Nobel Peace Prize collectively. Well, I simply want to say that uh, uh, the former president of Myanmar has been very helpful to India in our uh, certain problems of certain separatist and splitist tendencies in India. I think I fully agree with Victor that every friend of Myanmar should be very clear to any of the players in Myanmar that they support the unity and territorial integrity of Myanmar and they will not support any splitism or any kind of separatism in Myanmar or just as they do not want separatism in their own countries. So I think the former president has been very helpful to India in ensuring that we could take decisive action against splitters and separatists. And I, I believe that that kind of cooperation will continue into the present situation as well. So India has also had some very good relations for many years with the previous military government of Myanmar. President Townsend was an ex-general. Do you think he could play the role of a stabilizing force as a bridge that connects the NLD with the military so that during the period of a transformation uh, he would still perform a very constructive role in guaranteeing success of the, the process of democratization as well as uh, running a good economy. Well even though uh, mm. former President uh, Tenzin of Myanmar did not have a perfect record uh, in his several years as the head of state of for Myanmar, I think history will eventually judge him very kindly for playing a pivotal role in steering Myanmar from the military rule of the government to a democratically elected government. You know, and he freely gave up power once the results of the elections are made known. Yeah. And I think he set a good example, not only for the military leaders in Myanmar, but for military leaders in many other countries in the world. And I think going forward, uh, of crucial importance in the transformation and the restructuring of the political forces in Myanmar will depend on the wisdom and vision and courage of Aung San Suu Kyi and her ruling party and all the political forces in Myanmar, including the military. The military should no longer look at Myanmar as its own kind of exclusive sphere of influence and enriching themselves as their key mission. No, the military should be guarding the territorial integrity of Myanmar, defending Myanmar against foreign enemies, and then making sure that peace and stability prevail, and the government will be in charge of running the country, and the military will be defending against domestic and foreign enemies. Eventually, I hope, the Myanmar's military will make that big leap of faith forward and become a professional army, an honorable army, a decent army, without having their own ambitions commercially, trading-wise, or taking care of their interests above the interest of okay, the whole thank population. Much. Thank you very much for your participation in this thank dialogue you. on the future of Myanmar. Until next time, goodbye.